Marvel may have already stolen the show at Comic-Con before the event even began. Yeah, I'm talking about how Taika Waititi is set to direct Thor 4 in Phase 4 of the MCU. Let's nerd out about why this is so dang amazing. It's like the news, but for nerds. Today's shout out goes to Dara Turner. Indeed, Soren is the name of the female scroll at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home. Day to the end of this video where we will ask another nerd card question. What's up everybody? Happy Thursday to you. I'm Josh, welcome back to the den. Comic-Con is upon us. And we are going to be coming out with a lot of videos in the next couple of days. Stay to the end of this video if you want a better look at like how our coverage of everything Marvel and everything San Diego Comic-Con is going to go. Okay, now let's get right into this news. And again, crazy news drops while I'm trying across the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Like I'm moving right now, this is ridiculous. The, the Sith Trooper thing happens when I'm traveling and I couldn't do a video right away. This story drops while I'm traveling and I couldn't do a video right away. Like what is going on right now? But according to The Hollywood Reporter, Marvel and Taika Waititi have come to an agreement. The ink is already dry, the contract is already signed. Taika Waititi will be doing Thor 4 in the MCU. Apparently this is because the Akira movie that he was working on with Warner Brothers is being put on hold. There's some problems with the script or something like that. So that movie's being on hold and Kevin Feige swoops in and steals up Taika Waititi before another studio can get to him. We're getting Thor 4 and we're getting a Taika Waititi Thor 4. Now this is actually pretty crazy guys. This is like a Kevin Feige shot across the bow because we thought maybe some of these studios that had pulled out of Comic-Con like Sony, like Warner Brothers with their DC movies. Yeah, we thought maybe some of these studios might release some crazy news around the time of Comic-Con to sort of capitalize on Comic-Con as an event and get some news out there online without actually being there in San Diego. And Feige cuts him off at the pass and signs Taika Waititi before the dang Comic-Con even begins. It's pretty crazy stuff, actually. They're marketing geniuses over there. Like, they know what they're doing. Now, I definitely want to speculate on what kind of a crazy Thor 4 we could get out of Taika Waititi, so we'll do that speculation in a second. But first, let's talk about what this announcement means for the MCU, and most importantly, for the slate of films that we think we're going to be getting for the MCU in Phase 4. The first obvious thing that this means is we can go past trilogies with these characters. Thor will be the first character to go past three films in the MCU. I mean, this is a pretty big deal. Opens up the door for other possibilities. I mean, technically, Captain America is still alive. He could do another movie as an older person. That would be an interesting angle, something they have done in the comic. You could do an Iron Man 4 and technically have Tony sort of come back either through like AI or through some kind of weird alternate reality. Maybe he comes back to crown the new Iron Man or maybe he comes back just for some kind of a crazy mission. Like, it's not outside of the realm of possibility. We heard rumors that they're trying to take the Tom Holland Spider-Man up to six films or up to nine films and this means that you could see the label of the number four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine next to Spider-Man. I think the most interesting aspect of this announcement is what it means for the Marvel slate. You see Marvel Studios has all of these release dates already like there so we know they have a bunch of films and we know when they're going to be coming out and a lot of fans thought that for phase four or beyond phase four we're going to be getting a slate like what movies are fitting into what slots but what this announcement means is that Feige is playing it much looser and I'm starting to think we might not get a full-on slate that puts every single movie in its release date because when things like this happen Feige might want to just sign some contracts real quick and plug a cool movie into the pipeline at a good date but basically this just gives them way more flexibility I think that this is why they said they might not even call it phases we've been hearing a lot of things about how it's gonna be very different in the MCU past the Infinity Saga, signing a Taika this late in the game and getting Thor 4 into production and them streamlining it and putting it in one of these dates, that kind of implies that Marvel's going to play it much more loosely and not just set everything in stone as far as release dates. Now what I'm hoping is that we still get big teases of like event movies that are on the horizon. Like technically think of the old slate with just Infinity War and Civil War and some of these other big things that will happen. Like part of that stuff is super fun for MCU fans to speculate, see that thing on the horizon, kind of reverse engineer how we're going to get there. So I hope they still like put Dark Avengers up on a screen somewhere and say, yeah, this is coming eventually or something similar. Like, you know, Dark Avengers is just what I'm hoping for, but the example holds true. All right, now lastly, let's speculate on what craziness we could expect from a Taika with TD Thor 4. It's way too early to say what characters or what kind of a plot he might be working with, but it is important to note that he is signed on to write and direct this film and he actually did not write 
Thor Ragnarok. And if you look at the catalog of movies and work that Taika has before Thor Ragnarok, we can expect one thing and one thing only, absolute weirdness. I expect Taika to, to be going around in space, definitely exploring cosmic stuff. Like this will not be an earthbound story, but it's not likely to be connected that much to the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And yes, this likely means that the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will not have Thor in it, or at least not a lot of Thor in it. So you can expect weirdness in space with Thor. And also it's important to note that due to the Fox purchasing, depending on how they develop this, like what the timeline is here, Taika has access to a litany of amazingly weird cosmic characters that he can use that were previously off limits. I mean, this includes people like Blastar, the Silver Surfer, Galactus, the Super Scroll, Franklin Richard, possibly Annihilus. You can even see mutants like Abigail Brand, Mojo, or people from the Mojoverse, or you could see the Star Jammers and some crazy Shi'ar stuff. I mean, all of that stuff is now like available to Taika to build the weirdest, craziest Thor 4 story you've ever seen. Thor Ragnarok's one of the best in the MCU. It's, it's Quentin Tarantino's favorite movie in the MCU, which is like such a high compliment, and, and I'm I'm just kind of geeking out that like somewhere today Tarantino's reading this news being like that's awesome. Can't wait to see the next Thor movie. Like, that's just awesome. We've also heard that the MCU is sort of splitting up their stories between Earthbound stories with the main Earthbound villain and cosmic stories with sort of a space cosmic grand scale villain that would sort of cross over those films. And remember guys, Thor Ragnarok directly tied right into Infinity War and sets up a lot of the character arcs that are important for Infinity War and Endgame. So it's not like, you know, this movie is going to be completely isolated. I figure it will be its own story, but then it will probably tie in to whatever grand cosmic story they're trying to tell with all of those movies in the MCU. That's the news, guys. Taika Waititi and Kevin Feige steal the show of Comic-Con before Comic-Con even begins. We are getting Thor 4. Let us know what you think about this in the comment section below. Now let's check the nerd card before we get out of here. I want to know who is the captain and leader of the Star Jammers popular X-Men character has ties to some really significant X-Men, in fact. But the question remains, who is in charge of the Star Jammers? Answer that question in the comment section below. All right, let's fill you in on how this San Diego Comic-Con stuff is going down. We're gonna be doing a lot of videos, guys. Usually I only do one, maybe two videos a day. You might see up to three, maybe even four videos a day in the next couple of days. Just as crazy stuff comes in, we're gonna break it. Later today, there is a gaming panel for Marvel Gaming. This will talk about the Marvel's Avengers game and it's gonna talk about Ultimate Alliance 3. And we're gonna be covering that on the gaming channel. So go check out the Denim Nerds gaming channel for the coverage there. But I already have another video for today, which is talking about a crazy Star Wars story from this poster that was revealed for a character from Vader Immortal. We might know who Snoke is now, and it's kind of cool. So I wanna talk about that later as well. So stay tuned to this channel, the community tab here. Go check out the gaming channel and check us out on social media. That's how you'll know where all of the coverage is gonna be coming out. Ad. As I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and a nerdy day, and I'll see you in the next video.